Hi, hi, hi. It's Mrs. Stitches, Sheila. Uh, I'm getting ready. Oh gosh, I'm getting ready to start a stitch with me. And so I got my tripod set up there. Gonna try the angle. Um, Ukraine won. Here's a, a screenshot of the tally of the votes that I kept right here. And so, um, for those that initiated, this is December 31st, 2022. And last year on this day, I stitched the Norway flag in a heart shape. And this year, I have traced out the heart shape. Unfortunately, I cut it from my fabric, so I'm going to have to stitch this in hand because it's so small it won't fit in a hoop or anything. And Ukraine one. So, there we go. So, I am going to go get set up and we'll get started. See you in a bit. <laughs> okay, um, I tried to zoom in and it isn't working. It doesn't zoom in when I have it on um, selfie mode. So I'm going to try this. I don't, I might have to do a couple different angles, but that's what you're going to see. It's going to be just a little bit. Okay, so hopefully it'll be close enough to my face and close enough for you to see. So, first I'll start off with the blue. Um, these are just some uh, random floss I got in a, almost a giveaway. This is uh, Designs of the Needle. Um, made in Mexico. With some, some pretty inexpensive floss. To start off, because this is a short strand, I'm going to actually just do um, two strands, not do the loop start. I'll do a waist knot start instead. And I got my needle. I have to lick because I don't have my threader here. This has got a wide eye of the needle, so it shouldn't be too bad, but doing it on camera, of course. There we go. So, I'm going to start off here. I'm probably going to go blue to about there, I think. So maybe what I'll do is I'll start, let's see, we got to figure out if we're on even one and two and three and four, five. I could just start up here. That'd probably make a lot more sense. Why don't I just start up there? I think I'm going to here. Hi, Haney. I have no clue as if I'm on an even or odd, but I would do, just do a partial if I was on a, a odd anyways. I'm probably going to do a half there anyways. So let's just go over to here. Now, do you see any of this? Yes, you are. Okay, good. Oops. I like to hold my tail sometimes so that this is hard to see. I have to turn on a light. It's using natural light, but I'm actually having a hard time seeing this morning. And my neck's a little sore, so there is that. This will be slower doing this one handed. I was hoping to. It's unfortunate I cut the fabric last night because it was on a bigger piece and I was planning on putting it in a hoop. I just forgot my plan. So I was going to put in a hoop so that I could show you how I two-hand stitch with holding a hoop for a Q-snap. I actually prefer, I love this small little Q-snap. My husband got it for me for my birthday and I just find it awesome. So I, I like the size of it and it doesn't seem to hurt my shoulder, my hand. I could get really quite handy in doing two-handed. So I use it on some pretty big projects, just working on a small area, especially if I'm using a, um, a small fabric where you're going to be doing a lot in that small area. So I used it a lot in uh, Halloween at Hawkorn Hollow because uh, it just worked really well to see the, the holes in the fabric. Okay. Well, that's a bit better, I think. Hopefully. Hopefully I can almost turn myself. So I probably can turn myself a bit in the chair. There we go. Oops, I got some other thread. 
Okay, there we go. I think that's going to work. Yeah, I think that's going to be working. And I decided to go one more for the half stitch here. And hopefully. Let's see. Wow, my vision is not working today. It's different having it in hand. I'm almost thinking of getting the fabric and restarting and doing another outline of the heart. Now I'm covering the pencil line, so I like that better. Maybe if I turn on the overhead light. What do you think, Haney? <laughs> She's the star. What I don't like about this is my hand is blocking the stitching all the time, too. But you are not here to see the stitching, although you will see the stitching. You are here for possibly for the stories or to see the product. We'll see. I feel already invested, even though it's only about 20 minutes. And I don't want to take a step back and get another piece of fabric, but maybe I should. Oh, it's better to do it early than later. Hmm. Okay, we'll pause and go get, then I could do it in double handed. I think I'd still be blocking. If there's any other way to block it a little less. try two handing this which I possibly could do draw. Could also be doing the sewing method. I'm not very good at the sewing method, so obviously I'm not going to do that. It doesn't feel natural to me. So I just pull my tail a little bit longer there. There we go. We're inventing a new way of doing it. Two-handed. Get my dexterity really going. I'm just look in the camera and see how that's working. That's working pretty good. Okay, so what was I talking about beforehand? Oh, I was just talking about the weather. That's fine. So I was going to tell you a bit about my background. Um, If you haven't seen and you like Stitch With Me's, I watched Mad Morty's Stitch With Me. I think it was on her Flossmas, and I think it was day 22 or 21. I can't remember. Something like that. And what was fascinating about her um, stitch with me, she talked about the weather, <laughs> same as me. And she talked a bit about, uh, I think she, she talked a bit about her job, which was interesting because I wonder, I always wonder what people do for work, if you didn't just know them as stitchers. Um, and she also um, talked about how she stitched a certain way to conserve the thread it just was the way she was it's not that thread cost that much in the conservation but it was the the approach she would take whether she would go from a bottom to a top or a top to a bottom it was always the shortest route to her next hole and the pattern that she would do her stitches in would also try to conserve the thread the best that she could so it was really interesting to see Oh, I screwed up. I should have done that top bit of the heart while I was over there. Speaking of conserving your thread. So I'm going to go up now and do those two heart bodies as best as I can. Now that I kind of got myself set up here. So do I have enough for a full stitch there? Just do I? 
Well, it would be a half anyways. So that's the half. And then we'll go up. I'm going to have to pause every once in a while and have coffee because I have just gotten up and I've had insomnia the last... Oops. I got to go get a threader. So I'm going to pause and get some coffee and uh, a threader. Okay, I got a threader. That will help. Oh, I have to show you my needle minder I got for Christmas. <sighs> oh, here. <laughs> We have one solid black cat and we uh, used to always joke he he'd walk around the house and you'd hear when my when my husband and I first got together, he could hear him walking, he'd just sort of pace the halls and all you'd hear is thump 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 thump. And my husband said it sounded like he was like stalking us, had a knife in his paws and he was walking around the house just taunting us. <laughs> and so I when I saw that needle minder and oh gosh, I can't remember where I got it. It was great service. I got the needle minder fast, um, right around Christmas. It was reasonably priced. I think it was like only six dollars. And came well packaged. The only thing she didn't do is give me a business card. So I'm not quite sure if I remember who the Etsy seller is. I think she's in Calgary, but I can't remember. I have to go back to my Etsy um, uh, purchases and see where it was from. So this thread is getting low and I think I'm going to not use these partial threads anymore and I'm going to do a loop start on the next because I don't want to have to do this twice up here. Gonna pause you every once in a while so I can have a sip of coffee, or I might just uh, maybe I won't pause you, maybe I'll just fast forward it. Okay, let's get a thread out. I'll probably be doing that in places where I don't talk so that oh, so they don't have to always be thinking of talking because that's not always natural, even though oh wow, this is being a bear to pull out. Let's take both things right off because there's nothing giving it a number anyways. And then we do that. See, we just do it like it's supposed to be. That's better. I will wind that onto a, um, onto a bobbin. And I just don't label them when they're, cause these don't have any, they, they don't have any numbers. They're so, ooh. For those that don't know, we bought off of market Facebook Marketplace, bought um, my husband, he likes to look a lot, and he found a woman that was selling a bunch of her stash, her mother's stash um, of floss. And it was supposed to be over 300 skeins for $75 or something like that. Uh, when we got it, I'm not sure if it was over 300 skeins. They were an all DMC. I think I counted them. There were about 80 DMC, and then there were lots of these no name brands and um some were like jp coats and there was another one that's sort of a name brand well there was anchor and then there were some that were complete no name or names i hadn't heard of before and old floss that and so you don't really have the numbers or the colors to use but you can still use it like you can match it up and you can especially use it if for substituting so I'm working my way through using it because paid for it, so it's best to use it. Okay, got to figure out what to do up here. Uh, go over one more. This is a slightly tricky spot. I don't know how I did it last year with the with the Norway flag. Uh, I was smart. I don't know how I did that. I made it look good. 
Okay, so I think I'll do a little half here. So that would be the half. Go back, and then we'll do some just at the very top here. It's our neighbor dog barking. I don't know if you can hear him. And I don't know if you are in the view. You are sort of. Okay. I'm just doing the blue and yellow. So even though these are flags, they will be simplified flags. So I could do a half here. A half. Probably shouldn't have done it this way first. That will be a half. I need my snag now that I pulled up the thread. Shoot. No, undo that. I don't like the way that went. Yeah, that's not good. Shoot. Did it pull up? Okay. I'll thread it up again and I'm going to have a sip of coffee. I'll probably get this sorted out. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one half leaning one way, a full one, and another half leaning the other way is the way I'm going to do the top of this heart. And so, and when I came up here, for some reason I pulled up that thread. So I'm going to go get my snag now, but it's downstairs. Oh, this is slow going. Wow. I'm tired too. Okay, so this is my snag nab. I don't know if that's what it's truly called, but... That didn't work. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I am gonna do this because I this is practice for me, and I just found some more threads I got for Christmas. There we go. Okay, so you just pull it through. It's essentially a needle with a rough and I got it at a needle shop and it just pulls threads to the other side so when they've come up they inadvertently came up don't know why but they did so let me I'm gonna just probably not talk much through this because I got a it's kind of tricky this little part here That's probably where I did my loop start. I don't think it was though. Okay. That's the half, I believe. Yeah, I think that's the half. And then we'll do a full, a full one might be too much. I almost just want to do could do over ones here. Let's do some over ones. Let's see how over ones look. Oh, this isn't, I don't know why it worked out so much better before. Probably because I was just winging it and now I'm overthinking it. Winging it versus overthinking it. Hmm. Don't over wing it, don't overthink it. That should be a little one quarter stitch almost. So we actually, we're going to just do a little squat stitch. I made it up. It's not really a thing. I just made that up.
So instead of going up two, I'm only going up one. So I'm making them uh, wider than they are tall. So that's why I called it a squat stitch. And then I think if they were, oh wow, I got a big, big thing at the back there. That is not good. That's the only thing about cheap threads is you get a lot more knots. Oh, that's a mess. Yuck. And of course, it's right when I'm doing this piddly stuff. So I'm going to leave that. <laughs> I'm going to try to actually sew it into the back. And to tell you the truth, I'm probably going to make these into ornaments or stitch them onto some other kind of fabric backing and or something. I haven't decided yet, but I'm just making these up. Didn't need to cut this fabric, but I did. So there you go. Okay, be good to get this little upper part here done because I'm not having fun doing this. So I'll go over and do the other side. And I can't talk very well when I'm not having fun. It's kind of a drag. Okay, coffee time. I need more coffee. I'm not going to pause you. I'll probably end up just editing this or speeding, zipping through it. I'll probably do the glue down about halfway, I think. Do a half stitch over there. That will be good. This is not helping my shoulder at all, though. I gotta turn on the light. I don't know if it's gonna help me, but I cannot see very well. Okay, there. Kind of almost slouched with you over my shoulder here, this way. That's probably gonna work. That's a little more comfortable. <laughs> see if I can get back to that funky two-handed I was doing. Let's see if I can get into a habit of that. So when you see things that you want to actually start doing them, such as stitching with a different hand underneath or doing this where you're switching the hands or doing the two-handed versus the one hand it's always going to feel awkward at the beginning but you just got to keep trying it and the more you try it you might before you know it just actually do it naturally so i'll sometimes revert to the single-handed and then i'll think about it and go hey i want to do this two-handed so you know it's doable and it's only way you can get better oops see there i went right back to the one-handed because like oh i'm only doing a half stitch so I better do that one-handed and I'll do a half stitch over here that will be good so it'll be a full stitch up this way boop, boop. wow I cannot see that right there I should have I always like with the half stitches to do the the half one I think Maybe these aren't half these aren't half stitches, they're probably three quarter stitches. That makes more sense. I call them half stitches, but they're three quarter stitches. And then what I was probably doing at one point was a one quarter. Okay. So I was gonna talk about what I did, like right now for a living. Right now I'm retired. Um so I retired at 55. Um, I, oh, eh, not always that coordinated. Uh, this looks like it has a rust stain on here. I don't know. My eyes just, no, oh, there's a mark. Oh, that's where I did the orange paint pencil. Okay, that didn't work very well. Um, I've been working since I was like about 13 years old or 12 years old. Um, 
I've enjoyed working in my life. I always thought that that's kind of what people did. And, but I know in late years in life, I was, oh, I'm going to do full stitch there. So I'm not going to do that that way. I'm going to do it uh, the normal way. So late in, I just suddenly, not that I didn't like my job, I just had other things I wanted to do. And so I got more and more looking forward to retirement. And then I met my husband and life got complicated because he lived in Alberta and I lived in BC and it was distance and there was travel and trying to spend time together and then we found this house out in Nova Scotia and suddenly retirement life came together that wanted to be not working and living out here. Yeah, I could work out here every once in a while I think about it but as it goes I got a passion for cross stitching and now I can't imagine, oh my gosh, I can't see those holes. Uh, I can't imagine not spending all my whole day cross stitching. Like I don't want to give up the time that I use on my hobby or my husband calls it now my job. So we almost look at my cross stitching each and every day as a job and I probably work harder at this than I did any job, but that's okay. I love it. So what did I do? Done tons of things in my life, but at my career at the very end was I was, um, I worked in fish health. I worked at a, a, a research center, Pacific Biological Cent uh, Station. A research center and I we um, the department I worked in was looking after fish health and so I worked in various departments I finished off working in the histology department I was the head histologist and so essentially I uh, would take different parts of the fish and embed them in wax and then make um, thin slices of the wax and put it on a slide and then you melt away the wax and you stain up the, the tissues and then you could see at a microscopic level um, all the cells and the uh, organ or whatever tissue you were looking at and you could see if something was present such as bacteria or a parasite or can't really see viruses, they're too small, but you could see um, evidence of a virus being there. Um, you could see um, cancers in a way. Um, they don't show up as anything, but they're abnormal cells. And it is the way that they're abnormal that you would make a diagnosis. I found that very difficult. I didn't have the knowledge set to do that. so. I was still kind of learning that a bit. When I got my job, um, I mostly learned on the job. Um, I started working there. It was actually a summer job I got hired on at first. And I worked there. Um, and kind of just the, the previous histologist kind of mentored me. And... And like I said, I kind of learned there were lots of books and, you know, he taught me some. And then my boss, who was the research scientist, taught me lots of stuff. He, he would, we'd go on a double headed microscope and he would teach me things. So early on, I would like read, like looking for parasites was the easiest thing because it's either there or it isn't interpreting tissue reactions is a lot more difficult because you have to have more of a knowledge base of what is normal and there's never a hundred percent normal you're always going to get 
something that looks a bit normal or a bit off and you're looking at such a small fraction so the actual what was on the slide so you take you know an organ of a fish or, so you have the whole fish you take one piece so you have say its liver or its gills you're just taking one little piece out of the whole fish so fish is this big you're, and then the liver is like this big and then you're taking like this big so you're 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 taking such a small fraction then from that you're actually slicing it down a bit more just so it could fit and get processed through all the chemicals and then when it's in the wax which is random which part gets in the wax I and mean, if you see something abnormal you could actually target that then you're taking it and you um, do a five micron slice of the wax, five microns. I believe a micron is one one thousandth of a millimeter. And you're doing only five microns. So that's five one thousandths of a millimeter thin slice. You put that and you stain it up, everything, blah, 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 blah. And then you're looking at it in the microscope and it's going to be a large area and you're just looking at a small tiny area in the end and saying oh look at that that looks different it's such a minor fraction now it could be throughout but it's just it, it's just kind of hard to interpret and so um yeah <laughs> i don't know where i was going with that um Oh, come on eyes, come on fingers, come on needle, get in where you're supposed to be. There you go. The one thing I loved about my job was it was actually very artsy crafty. So, you know, you'd have the science stuff where you're dissecting the fish and setting things up. But then once you got it into wax, it would be in this little cassette and you'd, you'd put it in a mold and you, so you're playing with molten wax, which was actually very nice because I don't know if you've ever stuck your finger into candle wax. It's not even that hot. It's actually quite just warm and soothing. We weren't supposed to, to have your skin exposed to wax. So eventually, like when I first started there, you know, safety, um, chemical safety wasn't a, as much of a thing. And so... We didn't necessarily always wear gloves when we should be wearing gloves. I'm just trying to decide if I do a whole stitch here or three quarters. I think I'm going to do a whole and then a three quarters. Oh, I can't see the hole. Wow, these are hard. It's because this fabric is not stretched as much as it should be. I probably really should have gone back to the original and not had it cut. Because this is slowing me down unbelievably. But now that I've just finished off this part of the heart, I'm not going back. I'm not going to restart this. It just has to be what it is. Well, if there's any other way I could put this on some kind of thing to stretch it out. That looks good. That looks good in the end. Except now I'm not hitting the right spot. Come on, come on, come on, fingers, come on, eyes. So that was, I started off there in uh, late 80s, 1989 ish, as a summer job. I stayed there for probably into the early 2000s. Then I got transferred into a different department because somebody had retired. And so they put me in a different department doing a, that was the first time I became a head of a lab. And that was more of a diagnostic unit and somebody was retiring. So it was actually being trained under her to replace her. Um, and that was where I went to all sorts of various places and learned how to do a full workup on fish. So it was looking for diseases. It was um, to do with um, 
just doing a health check on them to make sure they were disease free. And so I would go and you would take samples to do bacteriology, virology, um, uh, what else did we do? Uh, some parasitology. So you just would collect different things and process them different ways. So each fish you would get lots of data. And just to make sure it, we were looking for specific parasites and bacterium um, and viruses. We also did virology, so we'd look for um, viral diseases. And so we're screening for those. And then once, oh, I got to have a uh, Got to finish off this three core stitch up here. I didn't do that. Mm. Oops, my finger got in the way underneath. Oh, my knee doesn't like being out straight like that. Oh, that hurts. Oh, 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 that's not good. Oh. So yeah, so we just screen and make them, and then I'd write a certif certification because I had um, the power to do that and say that they were disease free. So I would go to certain places um, two times a year and do that. And so that was essentially all my job was. It would rotate around. I had about, mm, I think around six or seven places I'd go to. And so you collect the samples and then come back and work up the samples. And so each place would take approximately two weeks to get it from start to finish. So, it just, yeah, it was a good job. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta reposition myself. I'm gonna finish off this thread here. What a mess this back is. I never care about the back. People are so funny about their backs. I, mind you, when I do have a good back, I am pretty proud of it. But if it's not a good back, that's so be it. That's okay too. Okay. Now loop start the next one again. I don't know where I put that. There's that thread. Is that the thread? Yeah, that's the thread. Yay! Didn't lose that. Good. Let's uh, put the needle in there for right now. now this is going to be sped up some. Okay, we got to get ourselves more comfortable here. I'm going to have some more coffee. I'm going to have to edit some of this. I don't even know how long I've been going for. Oh, 32 minutes. I, I think when they're too long stitched with me, I don't think anyone can sit through a really long stitch with me. I know people do it, but I don't think they're doable. So I would like you guys to see, like, from start to finish on this, so. So it was a good job. It was funny because, like I said, I started in the histology department when I first started at this, uh, at the station. And then I, you know, midway through my career, so I was there from 89 to 19, 30 years. Um, and sort of midway through, I actually went back to school. So because it was a summer job, uh, after I was working in the other department, yeah, so I switched halfway through and got more of a complete picture sort of understanding of fish health. So I got a little sampling of everything with doing all the sort of disciplines. The only thing I never did much of was um, the... Uh, DNA work, the PCR and that sort of stuff. So we had a whole department on that, molecular biology. And I did a little bit in training in it. I did collections for them, but I never really got very far in it. Um, it just didn't suit me. Um, I never became efficient at it and it just wasn't my thing. So that's the only spot where I probably didn't, um, have a good knowledge base on. I mean, I understood it. So part way through my career and round about, well, near the end of my career, about 2007-ish, 
I either got it in my head or was advised to go back to school and finish off my BSc. So when I'd been in school previously, I did a uh, just a degree degree um, degree program and got um, a degree, but which was only two years, my first two years. And so I never had um, a diploma, like I didn't have my BSc, Bachelor's of Science. So I went back at the age of 50-ish, not sure when or something like that, something close to that, late 40s, mid 40s. And had to even take some first year courses because over that many years, 20, 20 ish years, um, the requirements for graduation had changed too, such as molecular biology became more of a thing or genetics. And so you had to have more of a knowledge base. So I went back to school and sort of did, I was actually working part time and doing school part time. It dinged me on my retirement because any part-time work is, um, you only get, I don't think it's um, pensionable time. And so even though I'd been there 30 years, in the end on paper, I think it was only 27. So that was kind of a drag. But I wasn't prepared to stay more years. Um, the timing was right when I retired for me to retire. Now in hindsight, COVID happened right after it. And so I probably would have been able to, because everyone was staying at home or whatever, I probably would have been able to do something else. I probably would have been able to start the retired lifestyle. But that's hindsight. And you just don't have that at the beginning. So So I think at this point, I'm going to um, stitch the the blue here down to there, and then I'm going to come back to you, okay? So I was just thinking about what I could talk about, and I thought, well, instead of just holding this as a thought of what I'm going to talk about, uh, why not just turn the recorder back on and talk? <laughs> so I thought... This is sort of like a get to know me um, to talk about our pets that we have. You may have already gotten it from Floss Tube, but maybe not. So I'm sure I'm always talking about them, but I had always when I was living on my own. So I lived on my own until I met my husband, which was um, six or seven years ago. Or let's see. Hmm. <laughs> 2014, I met him just around about this time of the year. 2014, wow. So that was mm, eight years ago. And we didn't truly meet again until the spring. So we just briefly met at a race. I told this, I think, at, at uh, my Flossness. Um, it was on the winter solstice. And so up until that point, I was very, very single, living on my own, a bachelorette all my life until I was in my mid-50s um, or early 50s or something, something, 50-something. And so I had cats. I was a crazy cat lady. Um, I had at one point six cats. Yes, you heard me right. Six cats. That was the most I ever had. Um, I think I had in one year, three of them pass away. I think a couple of years before that, another one had passed away. So I was down to five and then three passed away in one year. So I was down to two. Two was much better. <laughs> Mind you, I think it's, you know, they're not really that much work. Um, and I do love cats. I can understand being a crazy cat lady, but I also understand the hassle of cats and why people don't like having cats. So, you know, the kitty litter and the food and they always seem to sometimes late in life have urinary tract problems, which causes them to pee in places. You know, animals can be smelly and messy and such. So 
anyways, when I met my husband, I only had two cats. They, their names are Harry and Haney and they got named because the other thing I used to do, because before I met him, I actually didn't cross stitch at all. So I was a runner. And so I would go in races all the time. Um, and that was what my main focus in life was. And so there was one race. It was going to be my first ever 100K, I think. And it was from uh, a place in BC called Harrison Hot Springs to a small community called Haney. And so I ended up getting injured beforehand and dropped out and didn't go in it. Um, so I was a DNS, which is a did not show, which is heartbreaking because... You paid your entry, you start training, and then something happens and you actually can't do it. It's kind of like a, you failed before you even started type thing. Um, so as consolation, I got two kittens and named them after the race. Harrison for Harrison Hot Springs and Haney for Haney. The, the little community that was supposed to be the finish. So they're brother and sister. So those were my two cats that I came into the marriage with. My husband had lots of animals too. He had, at the time I met him, oops, oh, that's one too many. He had two birds, um, Mr. Bond and Chicken Hawk. So Mr. Bond is a African gray and Chicken Hawk is a green cheek conure. And he had the one, our one dog. Uh, Olive, Miss Olive, she's a mix. She's a rescue dog, of course. Um, and she is lovely, absolutely wonderful. Um, and he had one cat at the time um, who was a, also a res rescue cat from the north. And she was um, had frostbite when he found her. So she had, was missing a little chunk of her ear and a little chunk of her nose. Um, and we called her Frosty. That was her name. Kind of fitting. Um, so we had to merge the animals when we got married. And so we kind of did it. I went and um, before I retired, I took a three month leave to live with my husband in Alberta. And I took both my cats with me. So we actually merged the whole family then. The other thing I did in preparation for us living together is I made my cats go from being indoor outdoor to being indoor only. So that meant blocking the cat door and just keeping them in all the time. It was actually a smooth transition. I was really surprised that I could, that they adapted to it as well as they did. I think I had Haney escape once and I had to go through the neighborhood calling her name, but I did find her. Yes, I'm talking about you. That's Haney right there. <laughs> um, so, uh, I was so worried about Haney because she was the huntress of her and the birds. I was just so worried. And so, luckily... Mr. Bond is big enough that he actually scares her at times. She does look at him curiously at times, too, which really makes me nervous. But if he moves towards her and makes a sound, she's actually a little scared and start running away. She's For being a hunter, she's actually also a scared cat. It's really funny. Uh, I'm going to start a new thread. And um, Chicken Hawk is small enough that she would want to, you know, catch him and, and hold him in her teeth and play with him in a not very kind way. But he is actually quite aggressive. And so when my husband first brought Chicken Hawk into his life, he had, I think, a couple of cats and Chicken Hawk just runs after them and goes, tries to bite them. And so he pretty much sets his I'm the king right away. So he kind of fends for himself, but they're still small and you know, the whole thing. So you have to still be a little bit leery and a little bit cautious at all times. So we're kind of 
you know, make sure that when the birds are out and the cats are, cats are always roaming about, but when the birds are out of the cage, you know, that we're kind of a little bit with them and kind of keeping an eye on the cat, especially in the beginning stages. And after my three month leave was over with, um, I had to head back to BC and work and, um, I think almost the night before I was leaving, I came up with an idea because Harrison is a fair, my husband just kind of bonded with Harry and they, they kind of, he, he likes them and Haney, he didn't bond as much with. And so I was going to be taking Harry and Haney back with me. And at the last minute I said, what if I took, chicken hawk back with me instead and you kept Harry. So my idea was that we, the animals would get a little bit used to the other animals. So Haney would then be with chicken hawk, which was the one I was worried about her with the most. And also I get used to the animals. So I, you know, would ha be living with the birds, which I've never lived with birds before. And so I'd actually get kind of a little bit used to them. So we did that. So I took uh, Chicken Hawk back and Haney and he kept Harry. And it gave him company of another cat. And Harry got used to, a bit used to the dog and Bond and, and Frosty sort of, not really. <laughs> they, I don't know if the three cats, I, they got used to each other. We ended up. Oh, we moved all those animals across the country. That was quite the thing. We had three, no, we had, did we have three cat carriers? I think we had three cat carriers, the two bird cages, obviously, and then Olive. And so we had two vehicles. And um, I can't remember who had what, but yeah, we drove across the country with these. And it, uh, I think we took, Hmm. That doesn't look like a great spot. I got to take that out. Um, how many days did we take? It's a little confusing because we went from Nanaimo to Medicine Hat where my husband had all his stuff in storage and then had to load up all his stuff into a U-Haul. And so I, I, we were at a campground and I stayed at the campground with the, we call them kids. <laughs> with the pets and he he went to the the storage locker and kind of did loading he likes to load on his own he doesn't like to have much help or input so it worked out better that way um and i had sat and cross-stitched with the animals and spent some time and then we did it kind of like a convoy and started driving across the country um i think our first stop was Manitoba and then I think we had probably hmm, I want to say one two three four four or five days in Ontario it takes you forever to get through Ontario one of those we actually had we're at a spot and we wanted to time it well for um the long weekend coming up and so we ended up staying an extra night at one spot that we liked it was a lake and big campground and we just decided to just breathe and and spend an extra day instead of traveling rest day and then one in quebec and one in new brunswick i think can't remember that i think so and then home we Haney, the cat that you see right here, she, like I said, she's a scary cat. And we had leashes for the cats. And so we had collars and leashes. So and if it, they ever came out of a cage, they were on a leash. But the first time in Medicine Hat at the campground, um, I think we had, were sitting out and like at a picnic table or something and had the leash or was holding the leash by the by a picnic table and suddenly she got out of the leash now my husband reacted really well because this is the first we've just left you know 
she's only been away from home for a short time and she's going to dart. She's going to run and she's going to be lost. And that's going to be the end of Haney. You know, bye bye Haney. My husband tackled her, grabbed hold of her. She scratched him. He was bleeding. Oh my gosh. She was doing the kicking the legs up and he was just holding on to her and getting me to get the cage and get her back in the cage. And he did. And then he's bleeding down his arms. It was all on his arms. And I just like, oh, felt so bad. But he reacted really well. Uh, so then we were more cautious with Haney. I think we, I think for a while there, we decided not to take her out on the leash um, or take her out of the cage with the leash, but hold her. Don't let her be on the ground. Um, so she mostly was in the crate or the kennel the whole time. And we got up to Timmins. That was one of our stops. Um, big campground, big, big campground. And at that point we got kind of lulled back in or I did and had her on a leash and she seemed to be getting used to it and behaving and had the leash. And I think I was walking from one spot to another and suddenly she got out again. She got out of the harness and I tried to drop to my knees to grab her, but my knees aren't that good from all my altar running and I couldn't, I couldn't get down to grab her in time and she was gone. And so I ended up walking around. We could kind of see her like this campground had like little woods between each. And we saw that she went into the little woods right next to the, in between the two campsites. And she was just kind of hiding in, in between the logs. And somehow, I think uh, my husband was coming from a different direction and, and I, we got her. He caught her. I think I caught her, but I'm not sure who caught her, but we caught her. Oh, cause that again was the cat was going to be gone. So we made it to Nova Scotia with the whole lot of them all safe and sound. And this house is really good for the cats because it has um, multiple doors to all the doors that go out. It has multiple doors throughout. So we mostly come in and out of the back door, which is a very Nova Scotian thing to do or East Coast thing to do. And so it goes into a mud room and then through the laundry room and then through the kitchen, which I consider the full house. Um, and then our front door goes onto the sun porch and then into the full house. So both of them have like a double door system. So as long as we kind of just make sure we close doors behind us, we kind of don't have that incident where you open a door and the cat can dart. So they're just, they're not, they... Only, I think, one time have they gone outside here. Um, one time, the front door, which is exposed quite a bit to the wind. I was actually, I think I was upstairs here stitching or doing a floss tip. I think I was upstairs stitching. And it was like almost the summertime. And I kept hearing the heat click on. And I'm like, why is the heat clicking on so much? It shouldn't be clicking on. It was very odd and I kind of just took me a while and I finally went downstairs and the door to the sun deck was open and so was the porch outside door. It was wide open. So the wind had blown it open and then that blew open the other door and I'm just like, oh, I was so panicky and I think, I think. I looked and Harry was sleeping because Harry always sleeps, but Haney was outside, but she wasn't very far and I grabbed her. I got her. She didn't run away from me. She just was sort of like, oh, what's this? What's this? And yeah, so that was like a, a moment of panic, but it was okay. And I think one other time we left the back doors, which means we had to leave three doors open. But again, if the draft gets going, they'll actually just stay open and um, came across. I think John was going in and out or something and um, came across the three of them open. And uh, Harry was kind of like going like, what's this? Oh, and just part way out. But they haven't gotten very far. They've been on our property and they're good indoor cats now. They don't really even seem to have a curiosity going out and 
it's really important to us because there's we're right next to a highway and so i mean it's a slow highway but still it's a highway and you just want to i think they have a healthier life or a longer life staying inside so there's less badness that can occur so that's our pets um i think we lost uh frosty not last thanksgiving but the thanksgiving before um uh, she was old she was i'm not sure because john got her a, as a rescue how old she was but i i she was up either uh i have it on her the stitch i did i stood to stitch for her i haven't finished it yet it is not on my list to finish it was supposed to be finished by the end of this year whoops that's in the wrong spot again um anyways i i think 16 or 17 years old i thought at the time she was like 20 something but um she was old and you know how when they get old they kind of start losing weight get all matted and so we actually thought well john my husband originally thought that the move was going to kill her. But she survived the move. She was pretty good on the move. And then um, when she was living out here, the change, and she kind of, she sort of adjusted, but she started getting skinnier and skinnier. And at first she had these like really hard, dry poos. Well, then later on, they, she was um, very diuretic. So it just was, things weren't right. Okay, I'm going to find my snag now, but where'd it go? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. And it's tucked to the needle miner. That's a good spot. Okay, I'm going to just put that there for right now. The one thing is when you do a snag nab, it, I found you always want to have your active thread through on the other side because it makes a bit of a mess if it's on this side because you want all the threads to kind of be going the same direction. There we go. It's good for the little tails that come up every once in a while or whatever. It's a very handy tool. I think it was only about $3 or $4. I would, next time I'm at a needle shop, I would buy another one of those. And the funny thing about it is I bought it when I was, I'd heard about a snag nabbit on a floss tube. And I think I was picturing a different thing, which a friend has now sent me, which is like a tail catcher. It's, um, but I bought this instead. And at the time I was like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And I didn't think it was really worthwhile. And I took it to Stitch North to put on the freebie table. But my table mates looked at it and said, no, that's what you want. That's really good. And so I'm like, oh, okay, that's what I want. So I took it home and then started using it and go, yeah, that's what I want. And found it works really well for me. So I'm probably going to do two more or three more rows of blue. Yeah, I'll just do it till it looks right. I believe it's about 50-50. I might be able to actually measure it or just eyeball it to see how far I go before I start the yellow. But I'm going to pause the video and carry on stitching and think of some more things to talk about. So I will and have some more coffee. So I'll see you in a bit. Well, I'm back. Oh, and I, um, I switched colors. I've been, this is going to be short, but I, you'll notice it's in a different position. And that is because... I took the, I stopped the, the filming altogether. You've been gone for little, do you know, about almost two hours. It's, this is slow stitching, but, um, while you were gone, I at first just stitched in quiet and then I thought, oh, I'm going to listen to an audiobook. So for Christmas, I got a Louise Penny I think it's called The World of Curiosities. It's funny, I can barely remember. I often don't remember the titles of her books. But uh, I'm trying to have a full collection of her books. I think I have the first 
eight or so. My husband knew I liked her books, so I bought her latest, which is the 18th, The World of Curiosities. And luckily, even though hers is a series that follows, you know, Inspector Gamache, it was, you didn't need to know what happened in the um, ones before. So it actually was easy to follow. And I, oh, I was so involved. I read that probably in about five days or four days. And I'm usually not a fast reader, but I just could not put that book down. Or, I, yeah, it was great. So I finished it last night. I actually kind of, sometimes when I finish Cross Stitch or finish a book, I equate books and cross stitch very similar, how I like to have lots on the go. And when I finish it, I want to savor it a bit. So it's actually hard to work on something else or to read another book. But I'm ready to start another book today. I, I belong to a book club. And so I'm picking up on Tuesday my new book club book. So I don't want to get too into a book because today's Saturday. So I have other books on go. So I'm just picking up one of the ones I have on, a, on the go and going to read some of that because I actually, after reading something so intensely, I miss reading right now. I miss the, but meanwhile, like I said, I collected a whole bunch of, I had read the first five, I think, four or five, and I couldn't find the next ones in the series. I have them somewhere in the house. I can't find where I put them all. It's very frustrating. And so I, in, I've, I've looked, I've looked and looked and looked. I'm going to look again tonight because it just, it's one of those things when you can't find something that you know you have, it just niggles at you and you keep thinking, well, it should be here. It should be in this bookshelf. And I looked at that bookshelf. It's not, and it, that bookshelf's not easy to look at because it's downstairs and our bird, Mr. Bond, loves to chew books. And so the bookshelf is a little bit of a hazard. So we have it covered up with a blanket and the blankets kind of anchored underneath it and behind it so that he can't get at it and then I put things on top of the bookshelf so I have to remove all the things off top then it's not a blanket it's actually a sheet and then take the sheet off and then have a look so I did that last night didn't see the book or I took out there were I think three or four books in the bookshelf I took them out um, got the list of all her books from, because I got the latest 18th, I got a list of all the previous. And what's really confusing is she released some titles. I think it was the second and the fourth one with two different titles. One for, I think, American audiences or Canadian, North American, and then one for, um, the UK. And I happen to have the one that doesn't show up on the Google searches very much. So that's very frustrating. So sometimes I'm looking for a book when I actually have it, but it's just a different title. Um, and, but like I said, there's these other books that I know I have and I cannot find them. So I have two bookshelves they could be in, the one downstairs where I have to take everything off, remove the sheet and then have a look. And it's quite low down. So, I was sitting on a chair and bending over and I didn't, I don't know why I didn't spend more time and I still think it's in there. So then there's another bookshelf where I got a bunch of stuff hidden and it, so it's got all my knitting in front of the books. The books are at the back and then it's got knitting and it's got doors. So it's a bit of work to get at, to look at. So I, I looked at that one, couldn't find any. And then I have another one up in my office. It's a really big one. And that's mostly old books that I've had for a long, long time that I moved. And I knew I, no, I, I knew I got these Louise pennies after I moved. So it shouldn't be in there, but it's cluttered up. That's where I got a bunch of, that's the one room I have to clean out. And so there's a bunch of stuff piled in front of it. And I got the books like multiple layers. It's a really big bookcase. And like, I think it's around eight feet or 10 feet long and about, oh, good two or three, two feet deep. And it's got two shelves. Anyways, they're kind of doubled up and stacked on each other. I got too many books. <laughs> so it's, uh, I didn't really have a full look at that because there's lots of stuff I got to move out of the way and things like that. And I 
just didn't do it. So I've kind of done some searches, but not 100% thorough searches. So I'm very frustrated that I can't find these books. Now, meanwhile, the next book that is for me to read in the series I found this was this happened last year. There's been a couple times I've looked for a book and couldn't find a book. Uh, found on the library as an audible, and so I put in the request and I put it in probably I'm gonna guess almost a year ago or half a year ago. I'd actually mostly forgotten about it. I couldn't remember if it was an audible or a real book I'd put the request in. Um, and that came up just the other day. So I am now listening to my next book in the series as an audible which works really well with stitching so um i'm actually planning to listen to that pretty much that's how i'm ringing in the new year is listening to that book i've already put in my request for the next one after which i will just cancel my request if i end up finding the book and reading it or um yeah that's probably all i think um but my book club starts we have a bit of a break with our book club we don't have any book club uh book in december which worked out perfect with getting the new book for christmas plus our local community here had they have a free library but they also had so many books contributed to the free library that they actually did one day a free book giveaway so almost like a free book sale i want to call it where all the books were set up and you just came in and took what you want. It was so weird. I took in a bag and just loading up the bag, pretty much what I could carry because I walked to it. So you don't want to carry too much back with books. And so I got a bunch of free books from that. And I was reading one of those before Christmas. Now, do I want to do a half? No, I'll do a full one there. And yeah, so that, uh, so I got lots and lots of books. We have another person here who was selling books for 25 cents each. So I got some books from that. I got lots and lots of books. So it's, I'm not uh, hurting for books at all. I'm going to do another half blue up there. Afterwards, I'm going to go back and do half or three quarter stitches just to make it look uh, heart shaped. Um, Yeah, so, so that's what I'm probably going to go back to. Right now I'm listening to, it's called the Brutal, Brutal Telling by Louise Penny. And it's quite good. I enjoy listening to books on tape and I enjoy Louise Penny. So, um, oh, and I don't think I mentioned this. I've mentioned this on Floss too, but maybe not everyone. Next year is, and it's actually, I started this in October, no new charts so i'm not buying any new charts i am however having new starts but no new charts so it's i'm trying to do this because of just consumerism i'm a little bit like wanting to cut back and i got lots and lots of stuff that i haven't started i got lots of charts so it's using what you got and you know not buying more until you really actually need it so and same thing with books. So now I've I've declared, oddly enough, my husband bought me one for Christmas, but no new books. So there's been so many, I have so many in the house that I haven't read. And I don't even know if I could read them all. And I want to read them all. Um, but so no new books. And I'm working at, I really got to work at this good is getting rid of them after i've read them but that's tricky because there's lots of books already excess of books here on our island so um like i said this free library they got overrun with people donating books so we don't have a used bookstore nearby it's a little ways away i think at one point i will just take the books to a used bookstore and just say here you know i don't want the store credit they'll probably still give me the store credit but because whether you use it or not you know oh that does not look right i don't know why that doesn't look right let's take that right out well it should be right it's too low down there 
I think there's a knot. Let's just see if I can make that look right. I think it's okay. Um, so that's, that is all I wanted to talk about. I'm going to go back to the, the book and I will show you when I do the last few stitches. Like I said, this is actually taking a really long time. I started at probably 9.30 and I think it's 12.30. Oh, it's quarter to one now. So, and this is almost all I've been doing. I kind of went and made a tea at one point and I'm going to go have lunch soon. But as you can imagine, it's actually taking a, a long time. I don't know how many stitches are in this, but that's, I don't. Next year, I'm counting my stitches again. We'll see how far I take that through. I joined a, a sort of challenge of trying to stitch 500 stitches a day, which is easy for me. I easily do that. I probably do closer to 1,000 stitches a day, but at least 500. That's not stretching anything, but it's actually keeping track of it and counting if I have something that's not on Pattern Keeper. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I am super excited to do my main thing, which is one finish a month and then one new start. I get a new start tonight, which is uh, the point of fifth, which I was thinking about last night. Usually my insomnia, I start thinking about things. So I was thinking about doing this and thinking about the point of fifth starting. I'm going to start in the center. I was going to start up in a corner. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I may look at the pattern and decide on that, which I want to do. Maybe I'll start up in the corner. I haven't decided yet. Okay, I think this is the last one out here, and then I'll be going in another stitch. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, but the I'm actually, oddly enough, looking forward to the finish I get to do. Yeah, that's starting on maybe the first, but definitely the second, if not the first, and hopefully get it done by the sixth. That's my goal, which again, if I do 500 stitches a day, I don't know how many stitches are left because it's a paper pattern, but I'm going to have to try and count. We'll see how, how well the counting goes. I'll try my best. So anyways, I shall let you go and I'll probably be back in a couple of hours when I'm right down here finishing off the last three stitches or so and then I'll probably be going back in and filling things in to make it look kind of more rounded and that's going to have to end up being square unless I, I maybe I'll do something there to make that a little more rounded we'll see but anyways I'll be back in a bit and be just kind of finishing this up a bit so we'll talk to you later bye Okay, here we are, almost at the final stitches. Um, I'm going to just do a, let's see, what do I want to do here? I'm going to do that. And then what I've been doing is I've been doing this. Going up. I've been doing my three-quarter stitch with the proper leg over because it changes the way it appears. Let's see if I can just hold this out of the way and find my hold. So I just wanted to show you the final few stitches. I'm going to go back and fill in things and make it a little smoother, but you got the gist of it. Move my fingers out of the way, my fat fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. I do actually get kind of used to this two-handed stitching in hand. I think I just got about three stitches to do down at the bottom here. I'm going to do... It is so warm outside. It is plus 10. I'm hoping to get this edited and uploaded and then be able to go for a walk. To enjoy the outside. I've got to do my exercises today too. But I'm just about done. Like I said, I'm going to do a tiny bit tonight of just, um, or at least before the next floss tube, of going around the edges. I'll probably do it tonight. 
So I call this, I know some people call these saffs, which is start and finish. Um, to me, saff doesn't actually express that it's in the same day. And so I, my husband came up with the acronym FAST, F-A-S-T, for finish after started today, which I thought was kind of clever. So this is the last stitch. And like I said, I'm going to go back and fill in some spots um, that just look a little bit like holes. So I think like right here I could do a half or even a hole. That actually could be just a hole stitch. We'll do a hole stitch there. And there's another one up here that looks a little funny. So sometimes it's good to err on the Oh, yeah, that could be a whole stitch, too, I think. Here on the side of less is more, and then go back and add more in. Let's see if that whole stitch looks okay. Uh, yeah, I could make it a half stitch, Let's or three quarters, rather. I keep calling them halves, but they're really three quarters. So... I'll just redo that. find it so much easier to just pull out the thread as opposed to trying to stick the needle. So many times you try to stick the needle back through and you miss it and then you made more of a mess. So it's not a good thing. This is much quicker if you just pull it all out. So again, this three-quarter stitch that I'm making, I'm kind of holding the loop a bit and then I find the place I want to come up. That's, of course, on this side. On the other side, it's just almost like a normal stitch. Oh, I cannot find that hole. It's right there-ish. And then back through. So that looks better. And I'll probably do one here too. And almost all the way up this side here. But you got the idea. So I'm going to pretty much finish these, upload them, et, splice them all together. These are a bunch of little bits and pieces together. And then upload it to YouTube, which will take a while. So you guys probably won't see this till late tonight or tomorrow, but I did do this on December 31st. And well, this is all I've done so far today. And it's like just after two right now. So first thing I got up in the morning, I had breakfast and then started at this. And do a half. I'm doing halves all the way up this side. It's going to look much better. They look a, a little bit bulky, but not too bad. Oops, is that right? Is there one between? Did I go in the right height? No, I did not. Let's pull that out. I'm going to finish this off soon. I'm going to leave this in the back and just show you and then just tidy this up. And so you'll see this in the floss tube next year. <laughs> But I'm just going to finish it up and then say goodbye. I'm just going to put this on the back and just show you the. So like I said, I'm going to go back and make this a bit more rounded. My original one that I did was pretty squared on that side, but it was rounded. So somehow I got squarer this time. So you can see. So I'm going to make this side a bit more rounded. I'll just do some half stitches here and come out a little bit more. And maybe fill in things like that little gap there and a little gap here. And there you go. I'm going to be done my Ukraine heart. Thank you for stitching with me. And we'll see you next year. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> oh, there's the camera. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye.